welcome back. So in this video I'm going to show you how to quickly set up a picker view. Um, so let's go ahead and add on a picker. I'm going to also add on a text field. All right, so if you noticed, I um, also updated the um, constraints. So make sure you add that um, or when you actually run your little program to test it, it's going to be kind of odd and weird. So just make sure you do that. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create um, a darker background or just a background with color so we can see our text field. So I'll do this with light pale color. All right. So let's go ahead and select the assistant editor. All right, so we have our text view as well as our picker view. So let's go ahead and create some outlets here. So I'm gonna just call this my, it's my text field, just to make it easy. And do the same thing for our picker. So I'm gonna call it metal picker because I'm just gonna put some metal types in it. I come back, oops. Don't know exactly how that happened, but let's try this again. the top of my text field by accident. Okay, so we have our two outlets. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a variable um, for holding the metals. So um, just metal type. And I'm just going to create some metal types here as default. Okay, so I have my metal types. And um, if you're wondering okay, what is the type of metal where uh, the ring is actually a string, and again, if you're not sure, just hover over it, and you can see it's a string because, as we all know, Swift is uh, can infer its its type usually. So, okay. So now that we have that, we're good to go. The next thing I need to do is I need to make sure that we can actually use our text field as well as our picker view. So we're gonna bring in some protocols. So the first one is um, UI. Let's go ahead and do the text field first. So UI text field delegate. And then we need UI picker view delegate and data source. Okay, so we now have all of those. We should get an error. Yes, we do, because it's yelling about UI picker view data source. Basically, there's protocol stubs that we need. Uh, we can definitely add that. I'll go ahead and show them to you right now, but I will delete them. But basically, um, in order to get picker view to sort of work, <laughs> what we need to do is we need to specify the number of components. So how many rows uh, can our user select? And then um, the number of rows in each component. So um, basically how many values it has that it can add to its wheel. Again, I'm going to delete this uh, because there's a couple other um, ones that I need to use. So I'm going to create some space here and feel free to go ahead and um, pause the video when I copy this over so that you can have all of the methods I'm going to be using, all the actions I'm going to be using for the picker view. So um, I already have my basic picker view set up here. Um, basically, it's just a really quick way for me to know and you know to have everything ready to go. And I'll explain these as I go along. So the first part, uh, if you remember when 
it was yelling at me. <laughs> I'm going to move this up here. Um, it was yelling for a couple of protocol methods. Uh, one was number of components, and the other one was number of rows in component, which I have here. Um, there's two more that I'm going to actually add that I need, and that is title for row, which will give the title for each row. And then also did select. So when I select something, I want the picker view to have some type of action. Um, to perform some type of action. Now, in some cases you might not even need this, but say if you wanted to um, update a UI view um, outlet that you have or a label or a text field. In this case, I'm gonna do text field. Um, you can do other things um, with the value that you select. Um, you can, uh, like I said, you can update something. You don't have to, you might, you might not need to. Um, <laughs> if you don't, great, but it's nice. So I'm gonna add that. So I'm gonna go through this. So really quickly, um, again, I just gave myself a little message here saying, okay, you need to have these two protocols in order to get Picker to work. And another thing you need to do is to make sure that you set the Picker views data source and delegate to self. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is gonna be actually moved up to my view did load. So I'm gonna just drag that on up. You see, I just dragged it up. And another thing I did is just to make it easier for me is, okay, what's the picker name? So that you have something to, um, it's a little reminder. So my picker view's name is called Metal Picker. So I'm gonna do Metal Picker. And then again, just repeat. Um, all right, so I have my delegate sets and my data source set. All right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to have a number of components. Now, it's usually one. You have to have at least one in order to get the picker view to work. Um, but you can have more than one, and I will show you more than one in a little bit. Um, we just need to get this to work. So I have I'm returning one, because so I just will have one row. And then my data source count for the number of rows in each component. And then I'm gonna get that from my, ver my array up here. So I'm going to do metal type dot count. So it's gonna count how many um, elements it has in my array and then it's going to use that number for the number of rows. And then it's asking for the title. So here I'm gonna do metal type and it's gonna be row. So it's going to assign the value for each element to, as a title for the row. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something here. So really what I want it to do is I want it to update my text field value when I choose a value from my selector. Now I can type something in there, something new, um, or I can again <laughs> just um, update the text field. So that's what I'm going to do. So um, my picker data source is my picker metal metal picker, sorry, metal type, <laughs> and I'm going to do row. Okay, and then I'm going to update the text field. Now here I have label dash text field, so it can be either or, but I have a text field, so I'm going to do my text field. Um, again, like I said, I wanted to also show you that this can do something else entirely different, like say if you have um, like a struct or a structure that has, you know, okay, if you choose this value, show this image, um, you can apply that to a picker so that you, when you choose a value, it can update an image. But I'm not going to use that, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Okay. And let's go ahead and delete this. <laughs> All right. So that is done. Now I do have one little issue here is my text field doesn't have anything. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, add some methods for my text field. All right, again, I'm gonna pull something in here. So um, make sure you pause the video if you wanna copy this. So let's drag this here. All right, so these are my text field actions that I'm going to be using. Um, so here I need to make sure that my UI text field delegate is in the class, um, which I already did. Uh, but now I need to um, resign the first responder. So this, what this is going to allow me to do is to uh, dismiss the keyboard 
um, when, when I'm done with it. And then I can add some actions um, to, after my text field has finished editing, and I'll do that too. So my text field name is my text field. <laughs> so I'm so creative. All right, and there's other actions you can do after resign the keyboard too. I'm not gonna add anything today. Um, I might, so I'll leave that there. Okay, so any actions that I wanna do after editing? Let's see here. Okay, so there's nothing I want to do right now, but I will do something. Let's go ahead and um, build and run. All right, great. So we do have our picker view. Let's see what happens. And when we select a um, value from our picker view, it updates our text field, which is pretty cool. So we've gotten that working. So this next part is um, going to be something a little different. Again, if this is all you wanted, you could just drop off. Uh, but if you wanted to see how we can update our picker view, please stay with me. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, add some more functionality so that we can add additional values to our picker view. Okay. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to update one my text field actions so my additional action that i want to do is i actually want to uh, create a um, function here a method that will add a category to my picker all right and it's going to error out on me because i haven't created it yet so let's go ahead and create this. So it's going to be function add a category to picker. Do our curly brackets. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out what we need to do. Well, first of all, we need to add it to. Um, the array that we have above. And then another thing we need to do is we need to um, update our picker. And then update picker. All right. So how we're going to do that is we're going to look at the value in the text field. So I'm going to do let text, um, which is going to be the text from the text field. Let's just do text from text field. Because <laughs> we're not only going to be using this once, and that's going to be my text field uh, dot text. And that's about it. <laughs> I will do more things here because it can be kind of gnarly. So another thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to just create a very temporary array and you don't necessarily have to do this, but for what I plan on doing, I need to do it. So, um, yeah, so this is going to be my metal picker, so the metal type. So this is going to copy the data from metal type. Okay. So if we look at it, we could say, okay, that is O of type string and equals metal type. All right, so the next thing I need to do is then I need to append it to um, the temporary array. So temporary array, append my text from text field, and then I need to then update see there we go <laughs> and then I need to add this back to my middle type and you probably wonder okay why are you doing this again um well just hold the hold off there for a moment <laughs> I'm gonna explain what I'm doing and why 
Um, so I'm just going to have metal type. Metal, not metal. <laughs> type equal temporary. And then I need to do self dot my metal picker and then do reload all components. So this is going to update the picker when we add new um, values to it. So let's go ahead and save, build, make sure we don't have any issues. And let's go ahead and play, <laughs> play. <laughs> let's go ahead and run our uh, thing here. So let's make sure that our functionality still exists and it does. So let's go ahead and um, select all, delete it, and let's um, type in some googly gob. So um, happy trophy. There we go. <laughs> and then return. Oh, nothing happens. Oh no, nothing happens. Oh, the reason why is because I forgot to add, add category picker to that. I don't think it's supposed to happen here. Oh, okay. I understand what I did wrong. <laughs> All right. So the reason why it is not adding categories to my picker is because I didn't let text field, my text field know that it is its own delegate. So let's go ahead and correct that. <laughs> Otherwise it just won't work. So let's do my text field dot delegate equals self. And this now should work. So let's try this out. And there we go. That's my new category right there. Happy trophy, that's what I just added. Now if you notice, it's lowercase. And um, if I hit enter again, it's gonna add the same thing again, which is not what we want. That's not the kind of functionality that would be smart to do. So let's go ahead and fix that. So uh, another thing I need to do, and. If you're wondering how I create this, uh, these filled actions, I will show you <laughs> in a moment. I'm going to actually edit this to show that you can. So that I remind myself that I have to set delegate. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead and fix our add category picker so that it won't create um, multiple or duplicates of information. Okay, so what I need to do is I need a way to, one, ensure that the data that the text that comes in isn't, is one, all in the same case, that there's not extra white spaces, because if you play it and you add white spaces or new lines, it will actually add those and make it and make it seem like it's totally different. So let's go ahead and fix this. So um, so what I'm gonna do is let text from text field equal my text, yes, but I'm also gonna make sure that one, that it's lowercase, so that we just have a very blank slate. I want to also trim any extra characters off. So I'm gonna do remove white spaces and new lines. You don't necessarily have to do new lines if you don't use a uh, return, but I'm just gonna say you can use it if you like have a text field, like a text box or a text view. I would say definitely do new lines. Um, if that's what you're trying to do. I'm just gonna assume it's just gonna be white spaces. All right, so um, otherwise I just wanted to return nothing. So if they enter in a bunch of spaces or something weird, it's going to not return anything. All right. So I'm gonna fix this. All right, that should fix my error. 
All right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to um, then append my new one to my temporary, which I did. But this time, the text coming in, I'm going to also um, do some work on it too. So one, um, I'm going to um, capitalize uh, the first letter and that should work. So before I actually append my temporary array to my metal, I need to do a, basically a sort and remove any duplicates that might be there. So I'm going to do um, sort D duplicate generic array. This is going to be array. I'm just going to accept an array, which is my temp array. And um, this particular method that I have here is something I created already. Um, I can explain it and give you some more details if you want it. Um, but basically, it's a generic array that will sort and remove any duplicates. So instead of using like a set, which I could use, um, but I might not need to use it, or if I want to extend this to something else, a set, a set just wouldn't work. So I'm going to drag in my special algorithm, which is my generic e-duplicate array. All right, so basically what this array does, or what this method does, it's an algorithm that basically sorts an array. So a little note to myself, the array needs to come in sorted already. Um, otherwise, this won't work. Uh, so I've got to make sure that it's sorted. Um, it needs, basically what does it, it enumerates through the array, it filters it, and then maps it back, and then returns the data. So it's going to map for the element, or the offset, um, there's other ways you can do this, uh, but this is just the way I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm going to actually delete all this because I don't need it. So it's actually a very, very, <laughs> really it is a very small little function. Um, but basically what it does is it just takes um, a generic array, or basically it take any array of a particular type that's comparable. And because my array coming in is a string, strings are comparable. And um, so it's going to pop out something generic, but it's going to be in the type that it came in as. So uh, I don't have to do anything other than give it to it and it pops it out. Okay. And again, I could do some videos on algorithms. Let me know, but I'm just going to do this. <laughs> Feel free to reuse if it helps you out. <laughs> All right, so now that I got that, what I'm going to do is it should sort this and deduplicate anything that comes in. So let's go ahead and uh, save, build, and run. All right, so I have my wonderful little array or <laughs> My app here. So let's uh, try adding um, bronze again. And we find, oh wait, you can't do that. All right, so what about if I added, um, let's see, participation? That's a metal, right? Oh, there it is. It's right there. Okay, cool. All right, so what if I tried adding participation again, but lowercase and make like one of the letters capitalized. <laughs> Maybe a couple more. All right, there we go. Let's see. Oh, nothing happens. Oh, so see, I can't, like say if I did silver and I added a couple spaces and a period, oops, a period actually, would actually cause some issues. And you see silver. <clears throat> now if I add a period, it probably will add it, which it does. So that's another thing that I need to filter out for is punctuation. Um, and that could be something you can work on. Um, it would require some more string manipulation, but it's definitely plausible. You can definitely do something like that. All right, so <laughs> it works to a certain extent. Um, not exactly, but kind of. So 
Um, there we go. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, another thing I can do is actually I could probably do it right now. Well, actually, I'll do it in another video. I will show you how to do more than one component. Um, just to keep this video short and concise, I believe I did uh, show you quite a bit of um, things here. Uh, again, if you want to do the setup that I did, having a little code snippet, basically all you need to do is select the code that you want to make a snippet. So here, for example, and you make sure that you're on uh, the code snippet library uh, tab here and then you just literally hold and drag and you can add it you can add the title you can say a platform do you is it the language generic or is it swift is it python etc you can go in here and edit what you saw me do um and then can hit done but i don't need to do it so i'm actually going to just um, delete it. So again, you can delete your code too, so be careful. <laughs> and it's gone. So um, again, it's really helpful, especially if you forget, like I do, what I need to add to make things work. Um, again, if you find this at all helpful, you know, just give it a thumbs up, become a patron, or um, become a subscriber to me on Vimo, where I will go into way greater detail on making apps and little fun stuff. Okay, friends, keep calm and cool down.